Hi there, my name is Raymond Harp, and I'm kind of a fridge nut. So I've decided to go ahead and make a series of YouTube videos that highlight antique refrigerators. Um, if that's not quite your thing, then you can be excused and go look at some cat videos. If it is your thing, then stick around, you might learn a few things. This is just a short overview video on this really odd piece of refrigeration history. And this is a 1933 General Electric Model CA monitor top. Specifically, it is the first of two different CA models. They look completely different, but they basically work the same. This one kind of looks like a soup can. In fact, people kind of <laughs> commonly will call it a soup can. It's kind of odd. Um, it's a very odd refrigerator, but they are, they're good. They, they, they work very well. Um, <laughs> for those of you who are not familiar with antique refrigerators in general, um, kill some of the common myths that kind of surround these things. Uh, first off, no, this is not an energy hog. It, not at all. Um, while it's not as efficient as some other models that would come shortly after this, this was actually the most efficient model that you could buy at the time, more or less. There, there might have been um, some brand that I haven't heard of that may have been better, but overall actually pretty good. Um, uses about, oh, for our uh, billing cycle and what we get charged, about three dollars a month in power. I mean, not a crazy amount. Um, what else? The refrigerant inside of here is actually very interesting. It's called methyl formate, and no other refrigerator before or since has ever used this refrigerant. It's quite amazing, actually. A um, few benefits of the refrigerant would be it works at a very low pressure. Um, it's not an ozone depleting gas. It has a very low global warming potential. Um, I think it's like a rating of less than 25, I believe. Um, another uh, benefit of it is, especially for the time, it's not toxic. A lot of the refrigerants that were being used at this period, uh, from like, you know, the beginning of refrigeration to really late 30s, early 40s, I mean, there were some toxic refrigerants flowing around and one of them was sulfur dioxide. If you've ever smelled sulfur dioxide, you will never forget it. It's a very, very penetrating odor and it will run you out of the house. Um, not good. But this, which has methyl formate, is actually not bad. It, you know, kind of smells like sweet paint thinner almost. Uh, the only reason I know that is because of the downside <laughs> of methyl formate. It's not a stable refrigerant. We kind of take that for granted nowadays because all refrigerants that we use for the most part are pretty stable. They really don't break down. Unfortunately, uh, methyl formate has a nasty habit of breaking down over time due to various factors. And it just... <sighs> It basically uh, creates these products called non-condensable gases which form in the system and it will keep the refrigerator from actually working right. So if you have a CA monitor top refrigerator and it's not working right, chances are you can actually trace the problem back to these non-condensable gases. Uh, not always, but for the vast majority of cases, that's really all that goes wrong with these. Fortunately, you can actually bleed them off, and if you do it right, you don't lose any of the refrigerant, which is really neat. Even someone like me, someone that's never opened up uh, a refrigerator before and messed with anything, can easily uh, do this process with just a simple tool. 
Um, it's, it's very easy and I'll even uh, include a link in the description that shows um, just how you do it. There, there's a uh, person that's actually uh, done a video on it that actually goes into detail on it and it's really good, really easy to follow. Um, what else should you know about this? This was the second monitor top in the uh, GE line. Um, it was actually considered a good improvement over the first one, which was called the DR. And I'll be doing a video on that later, don't worry. Um, it had better freezing capacity. Um, I believe, yeah, it, it was uh, a good deal more efficient than the DRs were at the same size. And again, didn't use toxic refrigerant. The DR did use toxic refrigerant. It used sulfur dioxide. So this was a big step forward. And I really think that it, it's just a neat footnote in the history of refrigeration. Um, methyl formate uh, just happened to be, you know, had one major flaw that kept GE from continuing to use it. And I think if it weren't for that flaw, uh, we might still be using it today, who knows? But uh, very interesting. Let me show you the interior of this. It's got a really nice door handle here. I don't know if you can focus in on that. Just the, you know, attention to detail. I mean, you just don't see that anymore. You got this little lip back here. I, I don't know why. It's just kind of there for style, really. They could have just put the handle right here, but you know, let's, <laughs> let's add a little edge on it, you know, for no reason whatsoever. You can open the door. This is called Textilite, one of the first plastics to ever be used in a refrigerator. Um, kind of similar to Formica from what I've read, but it was an actual GE development, so they were very proud of it. Uh, if you'll notice, the interior is much more white than the exterior. That's because this is porcelain. Now, some of the uh, nicer uh, models actually had porcelain on the exterior as well, but not on the top. And I guess I should also explain this top is removable. You know, they are two separate pieces. If you've never uh, heard of a monitor top, this whole thing just lifts up. The only thing holding it on is gravity. So it, uh, if this unit were to ever develop problems that couldn't be serviced in the field, you just call it a GE rep and they'll yank the old one off and put the new one on. Very simple. And it's kind of a neat design, just a little package unit. Here's your evaporator. Um, I don't know if you can see the frost on it, but um, you've got frost coming up both sides here. and. You know, every once in a while you defrost it, just like any other old refrigerator. Uh, this particular one still has the original GE chiller tray, which is very rare. A lot of those got broken over the years. Housewife would take the chiller tray out and want to rinse it out in hot water, and that the shock from cold to hot would usually break them. In fact, it actually says on there, do not rinse in hot water, so they must have had a whole bunch of people breaking their chiller trays. But you can, you can tell, like, it's, it's small. Like, this is, like, mini-fridge small nowadays. But back in the day, this would have been considered an entry-level size refrigerator, even though it's only 4.7 cubic feet. You know, that's, again, mini-fridge level uh, territory there. But, you know, this serviced um, a little old lady for quite a while. In fact, I've actually got papers on the wall over here that um, prove that uh, she actually was the original owner. Uh, she kept the papers for forever and uh, they actually ended up being sold to the fridge and they were there whenever I bought this fridge. Uh, very neat, you know, original bill of sale, warranty, you know, the whole thing. It's kind of weird to find a refrigerator that's been so well taken care of and yet not really restored. It was just always kind of taken care of its whole life and you know, it's got little bits of rust and stuff and the, the paint, you know, could really stand to be stripped and redone. 
but I kind of like it the way it is. Like, you know, what, what's this little mark right here? I don't know. Someone set down a can of something at some point and it marred the paint, but it, it kind of gives it character. It's not too far gone, if you know what I mean. You know, it's not like to the point to where it needs to be redone. And I kind of appreciate that. It, it, it has a history and it's very reliable. I've been running it for about a month now, just straight, and it's been extremely reliable. You know, never gives a moment's notice of uh, doing anything bad. Um, other than that, I guess that's about all for the short overview of the CA. If you would like to hear me blab on in more detail about what really makes this thing tick, if you're a serious, serious refrigeration dork, I highly suggest that you watch the other video that is linked in the uh, description. Um, you might appreciate it if you're a refrigeration engineer or just a dork. But uh, that's it for now. Um, I'll be making many other videos like this. Uh, just really uh, like to delve into these old refrigerators and kind of show that they're still out there, they still work, and you know, they're really neat to own. You know, if you have a need for an extra refrigerator, well, maybe shop around a bit and see if you can find one of these. It may be a little bit of work to get it going first, but it's kind of worth it. You know, it's kind of a conversation piece. So until next time, don't turn these into kegerators, just enjoy them. See you later.